people who were really notable, you were right up in there with them. Yes. Marion was a good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew all those people, yeah. And did you realize at the time, so, you know, you read about what's going on, and when you see of all these movements, you said there were a lot of things that were taking place, mm -hmm. a lot of protests, a lot of thoughts. It was crazy to hear about all the, the rap sessions that were taking place. Did you at any time feel, wow, Robin, you are really doing something that's going to matter? Or were you just like, this is what I'm here to do? Did you feel you were called to do this? I don't know if I would call it being called to do it, but since I was a child, I was very, um, I've always been black conscious because of my family. And I was always aware of the racial situation in this country. And it always disturbed me. And when, that's why I was so excited when they had the March on Washington. We said some, I could do something. Yeah, I wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a few more questions. At Howard, so there was always this um, debate about, you know, what some outside people think Howard University represents and what something you had mentioned before. And those who say it's this, we can have this whole conversation about class. And yeah, that's exactly class and colorism. When Spike Lee came out with the movie School Days and people had not been to HBCUs and I would tell them, this is real. <laughs> this stuff is real. This is what, this is the, the sensibility of it. And, you know, Washington, D.C. really is in the South. It's below the Mason-Dixon line. I grew up in a segregated town. You know, they had the black and the white, everything. If you wanted to get a job or you wanted to get a place to live, when you got the newspaper, you had to look in the colored section of the newspaper to find these things, you know. So we were very aware of it. And, you know, even though they didn't have signs like they did in the South, you know there were certain places you couldn't go. You were not allowed to go. You just didn't go there. <laughs> I remember when I was a child, my mother's from Savannah, Georgia, and my father was from New Jersey, right? Born in D.C. and grew up in New Jersey. And he never wanted to go to the South, ever. And I remember this, I was only three, but I remember this as clearly as yesterday. My mother wanted to go home and see her parents. And my father kept saying, oh no. <laughs> so anyway, he, he gave in and we were gonna get in the car, you know, and we we're gonna go down there, he said, and he, this is when I first became aware of race. He said, look, we're gonna pack everything, we're gonna pack all of our food. If you have to go to the bathroom, we're not going to stop anywhere. You have to go by the side of the road. And we said, why, Daddy? You know, and he just told us. And we thought, oh, <laughs> okay. And so I was aware of it then. Mm -hmm. And so I was, it was always there, you know. And my family talked about it, you know. My family was very lefty. <laughs> but then yet, here's Howard University, mm -hmm. this fashion of knowledge and black success stories. But people assume that the people there from the professors to the students were automatically going to be down with the cause, but that's not really what it seemed to Well, be. no, because, you see, that was all new. I mean, the thing is, you, they really were black progressives there, you know, they, they you know, all of the writers and everything, and, and the, you know, the thought, you know, County Cullen, people like that, it's like, we were aware of that, but it wasn't like this radical thing, because you kind of knew you might get beat down, you know. I mean, let's face it. So it was like people wanted to fit in. Mm -hmm.